Let's squash Vati. Hello and welcome to World Junior Squash Championship 2018. So last week on 24th of July we have witnessed the individual event uh, finals and this week uh, the, we are going to witness the finals for the team event. So we will be uh, talking about this uh, team event final more and I have with me Mr. Marcus is the technical director. Let's have his opinions and views also about this final. Hello Marcus. Hi, how are you going? Yeah, so I just want to talk to you on this uh, uh, final match for the team event. So what is your take on this uh, tournament? Uh, the tournament has been fantastic. It's uh, been a quite a spectacle here in Chennai with this amazing facility. The class court set up here at the mall has been, um, it's been excellent. It's really a showcase for our sport. The standard of squash has been, been outstanding. Uh, some of the athletes these days in this sport is, um, is second to none. Um, yeah, really, really great to see these junior players throw themselves on the, around the court and have a great time. It's been really good. Yeah. Tell us, Marcus, uh, about the uh, technical specifications, norms and guidelines for the players. Like in this global event, what are the differences between men and women? So for this event, the players need to be under 19 years as of the last day of the event. So all of these kids are 18 years and, and, and younger. Um, the difference between men and women, well actually we're lucky in our sport, it's a pretty uh, equal opportunity sport and the, the rules and guidelines are the same. Obviously this year is a teams event for the men, last year was teams event for the women, so next year obviously the, the women have their turn again. But in terms of uh, the rules, it's, it's the same for both genders. Okay. Marcus, I just want to ask you about the uh, one particular aspect of the game, where I found in the last uh, week final uh, between men's and women's, there was a lot of collisions in the game. So tell us about the guidelines and norms for the collisions uh, which is happening in the game. So the referees, we've got a really experienced bunch of referees here that, um, that are control the matches. Um, part of our sport is that the people get in the way, they're in a confined space on the court, so they get in the way of each other from time to time, so the referees are pretty good at keeping control of that. Sometimes there are some moments where the players barge into each other. Hopefully the referees can keep control of that and, and make for the winner to be decided by the squash rather than the refereeing. Okay. Earlier I just uh, asked you about the guidelines and specifications for men and women separately on the guidelines. Let uh, uh, you please tell me about the guidelines for team as uh, uh, and the difference of individuals. Okay. So each country um, brings up to six players for the competition. Four players go on from the individual event to play the teams event. And, um, and yeah, so the individuals is contested for a week and then the teams carries on and there's gold medals awarded in that as well. Okay, Marcus, we'll discuss uh, about the match a uh, little later. Uh, the match is going to start soon. So we'll catch you soon after some time. Hi guys, this is Ranveer. Hi, this is Aishman Khurana. Hey guys, this is Jaydev here. This is Azuruddin. This is Mahesh Bhupati. This is Satyan Yan This is Manika Pachraj. This is Sharad Kamalachanta. Uh, this is Parvati. This is the biggest junior squash tournament in the world. I think the biggest aim and the biggest goal is always to be representing the country. Playing the World Junior Squash Championships is special, but playing in front of 50,000 people is even better. Wish all the Indian squash junior players all the very best for the upcoming Junior Squash World Cup to be held in Chennai. Watch the world's best junior squash players battle it out at Express Avenue Shopping Mall. From 18th to 29th July, I'm sure you guys are going to make us proud and uh, you guys have fun in the process. All the very best. Go out there and kill it, guys.
squash championships 2018. We're here at the final between Egypt and England. Today we have the number one strings uh, up first. We have on the left wall warming up Nick Wall, who's from England. He's the number one player, British champion. Uh, and on, on the right wall we have Marwan Tarek, who was the uh, world champion in 2017 and he is now the runner-up in the individuals this year to his uh, teammate and the number two, Gustavo Rossell. We've got a packed audience here at the Express Mall, an incredible venue for squash. It's a full house. If you look, if you look up, you can see uh, hardly, hardly a spare place in the building. I'm joined today by uh, a, a fellow, fellow squash professional. Here he is to my left, the very, very attractive uh, Sart. Um, how are we doing? My hometown. I used to live out here from 2000 to 2003. Uh, it's good knowing Alex and the USA team out here. So he asked me to commentate with him, and I'm here. Egypt looks like the heavy favourites. Yeah, I think we're, it should be a pretty exciting match. Both teams uh, got through the semi-finals pretty much unscathed, so they should have fresh legs and be ready to go. Uh, before the before the squash starts, um, just you know, coming from coming from England myself and being the coach of USA, it's. Uh, and I know you're from from the uh, from Chennai. So um, tell me a little bit about squash in India and, and, and in particular in Chennai. Yeah, Chennai uh, has been a big squash hub, thanks to Mr. N. Ramachandran, who used to be the WSF president, and uh, he's been an instrumental role, played an instrumental role in promoting the game. Josh Nachinappa, Deepika Palikal are both from Chennai, and they've been a pr uh, product of the squash academy, and. As you can see, both of them have a top 20 world ranking, you know, and it's it's great for the uh, profile of the sport. That's that's great. It seems to be a, a real hub of squash in India, and uh, you, you guys seem to have produced some really good players in the last few years. I mean, noticeably, um, British Junior Open champion uh, Velavan, who's I've seen a few players, looks a spectacular player. Right. Um, yeah, Vela, as we call him, is currently studying in Columbia University in New York City um, he's gonna be a sophomore and uh, he's been um, he's been amazing for Indian squash fantastic okay so as you can see we're warm-ups are, are over and we're about to start the match here I think uh, could be quite an interesting match this obviously um, the Egyptian player Tarek is the, a higher seeded player but Nick Wall is a talented player he's training full-time under the tutelage of Nick Matthew who's uh, obviously three-time world champion he's hungry he's fit and He'll certainly be ready for this, so uh, should be an exciting game. Yep. Expect expect some long rallies in this one. I think both of them. Uh, Tarek is uh, quite an endurance player. He's very steady, moves the ball around very well. Nick is quite an explosive player. Uh, typical lefty. He's got a great forehand. Um, very strong boy. So he'll be he'll be looking to get in front and dominate dominate as much as he can be interesting to see how they're both trying to feel each other out in the first few rallies bound to be a bit of nerves on there don't you think it's a world open final you're playing for your country there's an awful lot at stake there's our referees international referees there Never an easy job, but I think they've done a pretty good job this week in controlling things, and uh, and the play's play's been pretty clean and uh, a good start for Marwan here. He looks pretty pretty steady. Nick, couple of errors. I think the only way he's going to get him is put more pressure on the back, and you know, hopefully, hope he makes some errors. Yeah, traditionally the English players are very disciplined, hit well to the back corners. The Egyptian players are, look, have a little bit more flair and uh, and uh, take the ball in quickly to the front of the court. So I think oh, from what I've seen of Marwan, he's um, he's a little bit more traditional than some of the Egyptian players. Hits a very good length and he's very solid. So so he's, he's not going to be easy for Nick to break down, as you can see from the first few points here. Both these guys have had a long tournament. They both yeah. played the individuals, and uh, now they're playing the team event. So 
at some point, Great if this gets a there. long match, it's going to be a stamina in play, right? It is, yeah. It's, it's, it's warm in here, so it's going to uh, definitely take, take some good fitness levels. Nick will be pleased with that. Wrong, wrong foot in drive there. Just got to get rid of some nerves. As, we, as, you, as you look up here, it's... Uh, there's probably not a, a spare seat in the place. I would have thought there'd probably be close to a thousand people watching, would you say? Oh, easily. I think it's a Sunday and people are here in full support. It's amazing for the sport and the city of Chennai by itself. Yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's fantastic for squash in general. I, I, I think these guys will be lucky to ever play in front of this many people again. and uh, it's, um, it's a fantastic spectacle. The Egyptian camp will be very happy with this start, just keeping the English player quiet. Good start here. England definitely needs to pull one of these matches out, and I think if they can get the first one, it would be great pressure on Egypt. Yeah. But it doesn't look too good. Here from Nick trying to force it a little bit into the front two corners. He needs to, he needs to just get into this match here a little bit, not, not let uh, Moan run away with the first game. Oh, that's a nice shot. I think the crowd here uh, would love to see uh, this being signed in tie and, uh, and close all the way. So uh, I would say the crowd marginally on England's side, would, would you? Yep. Uh, as the underdogs, I think Chennai is used to that. <laughs> in cricket but in squash as well here it'll be amazing if England can pull this off Chennai, uh, Chennai T20 side are pretty good though right? Yep they actually just won the IPL league so I wouldn't say they're an underdog anymore but a very strong team You see here Nick's broken the string in his racket so he's allowed to go off and get, get another racket here each player will have probably five or six fresh string rackets ready to go in their bag so won't, won't be too much of a difference for him. Well, there he is, Mitch Todd. I think is, uh, as he is called. He, uh, Mick is the, I think he's the manager of the England team and he's the uh, owner of Pontefract Squash Club and uh, also the father of Sam, who we're going to see playing up next. Sam Todd is only 15. He's the uh, next English prodigy, really good player and uh, exciting nice prospect. See the England team getting getting behind Nick there. Hello, three six. So Alex, you're of English descent yourself. I am, yeah. And uh, did you ever play the World Juniors? I didn't. I unfortunately just missed out. At my my team they actually the year my team they won in That's Princeton there. in in uh, in America. Three, so uh, they beat I think Egypt in the final. Then um, that may be the last time. England actually won actually, so it's, oh, uh, wow. it's a long, long time ago. I'm, I'm uh, probably nearly 20 years ago. So um, I, I know it's been, yeah, it's been. I think it's been 18 years since England made the final. It's quickly onto that. That's oh, a that's a great shot. shot. So for all squash enthusiasts, there he hit what we call a nick, which is uh, what we're always aiming for, but. Most of us struggle to hit, and uh, you can see the, the joint between the front, the, the wall, each wall's there, and hit a beautiful shot, great accuracy. I feel like he's started to get a little bit more confident here. His body language is better. He's, I think he's got rid of a few nerves here. What, what do yeah. you think? And he looks like he's getting ahead of Marwan, yeah. putting more pressure by controlling the T. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what the tee is, it's the centermost part in the court. And like tennis in the baseline, it's one of the most important parts during a squash game. Yeah, especially at this level, really, whoever's on that tee more often tends to be the one that wins the match. So it's a real, it's a real, we call it physical chess, a battle for that tee area. That's a poor shot from Nick there. He was taken into the front. He should be lifting that ball. He'll be disappointed with that. There's the Egyptian contingent. 
A few, few, little, few nerves there, I would have yeah. looked like to me. I think you said it right in the start, you know, it's going to come down to a lot of nerves as well. Yeah. And who can handle the pressure well. Yeah. And the Egyptians have been here before and, and done it. And But, you know, in that same respect, there must be a lot of pressure because they've won so many times and they are seeded to, to win. So it's, it's never easy. I do enjoy watching the Egyptian players play. They all play with their own style and they, they let the characters come out on the court and they, they play a great brand of squash. It's always it's always fun for the people to watch the Egyptians play. A lot of flair yes. in the game. So I know you uh, went over to study in the States and, and uh, played college squash at Franklin Marshall, that's right. And yep. um, and I think uh, Marwan is going over to play at Harvard Harvard University next year. How would you how do you say the college game in America is with squash, and how is it uh, how has it changed over the last few years? Oh, that's a great question. It's um, it's amazing how squash has opened up opportunities for us international students yeah. to come there and get an education, and also come and play squash. But more importantly, like you said, you know, uh, oh, that's a big point there. Point. Marwan is going to Harvard University next year. He's yes. uh, going to be a top recruit. And college squash overall uh, has become really competitive because you have all these top world junior players coming there for education, yeah. but also playing for their respective teams. So the right. sport by itself has become very competitive. Right. You see this is really starting to get interesting now. Marwan's up the pace again. I feel the first game is probably more important to Nick than it is to Marwan. Just right. for that confidence. Just move very well into those front corners, Marwan. Oh. It's a good rally. Good long rally there. It's interesting to see Nick is really trying to stretch him out. Shot, Great good length. length. He's just managed to keep this this four or five point Hello. gap here, here nine, Marwan. Nine. Just enough to keep him comfortable in this game you see the sweat coming off Nick there these boys they make it look easy but they're working incredibly hard on there oh what a shot you see Nick there using his very powerful forehand being very aggressive around the middle of the court that's something he'll want to want to be a lot more of six nine You can see the heat is really playing in now, you yeah. know. Both these players are definitely going to start feeling it towards the end of the games. Yeah. And it's going to be a big mental battle if this gets close. Yeah. You also see the sweat coming off there. It's uh, the, the juniors have to wear glasses. Um, but it, obviously they fog up very very quickly. So it's, 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 an, it's another thing that makes it a little bit more difficult on the court. Well, it's good that Marwan played that. He could have looked for the stroke. Very fair play. It's got him on the move here though. Nick needs to get lift the ball and get away from it. Oh wow, what a shot. What a shot. Here we go. Nick's closed the gap and it's a two point game now. It's a wrong score there. I think it's, it's a wrong score, nine. yeah. It's 7 9. This is a big point here. Oh, I think we missed that on camera, but there's a stroke there. Very nervous looking Indian uh, Egyptian bench there. It's a game game ball in this first game. Uh, Nick put the boast in there and Marwan's too quick at the front. So the first game. Or is it? Oh no, they've called it down. Called that ball down. We couldn't see the front wall there. Great hold, good get from Nick. It's a big point. Oh, Ooh. he's at the tin there. 
This is now a very big point. Looking nervous there, the Egyptian bench. Oh, he's hit a tin oh, there. That's, that's a tin. Two tins in a row at the end there to give the game to Egypt. Egypt lead one game to love. The Egyptian coaches out there telling Marwan what to do, I guess. You know, it was a very close game in the end. So, a few highlights here from the first game where you can see Nick hitting the tin at the end there. Very close compared to the first game. Now, you see a difference here between the two cultures, really, of coaching. The English team, you have there Lee Drew with a very nice head of hair. Uh, coaching Nick Wall, it'll just be them, very calm. Whereas the Egyptians, you'll see the whole team. <laughs> there you go, couldn't be a better better explain there that every person there whereas English team will be a lot calmer and uh, just be one person just yeah. just diff seems to work for both and uh, whatever works for you but he's got a lot of people around Marwan there giving him giving him advice for this next game we're going to find out a lot how this match goes with the second game yeah we have the referees there, and a, uh, they've done a good job so far. I think Nick uh, Nick's going to need a really good, strong start here. He's going to um, have to back up. Doesn't want to give Marwan that confidence that's uh, that's going to push him on here. If he can if he can get stuck in the start of this, it's going to help a lot. I could not agree more. I think the last game we saw Marwan had the lead for most part of the game, and. Uh, Nick was under pressure throughout so if Nick can get the first few points here and do it the other way I think he's got a good shot here. yeah he definitely has the ability Nick I think it's just cutting the error rate down maybe not playing quite so many boasts into that front front left corner which is um, I always be able to use his movement to hurt him and I think he has a great yeah. chance and those are the kind of shots he's got to he's got to cut out right I don't remember seeing too many winners coming from Marwan's racket. You feel like Nick is deciding deciding the points, whether it be with errors or with, with his own winners. So if you can just get that error ratio down a little bit, then there's a great chance. Here we go. We're seeing a much longer point here. Oh, that is too high. Yeah. Referee's given a no let there. Wow, well, that's it. You know, I, li I like the thought process behind that. He wants the players to play the ball, and he's, set he's setting that tone early in the match, which which is which is impressive. And the players know where they stand now. They won't be looking for cheap lets. So, yeah, there's a lot of space between him and the ball. There is a line there. So, not often we say this as players, but good, good decision by the referee. Yep. Good pressure from Nick. Also for those traditional squash club players in India who are watching, uh, the interesting part about this game has become that the referees encourage you to play the ball more now. Yes. And you must be wondering that your decision might be right, but yeah. you'll be surprised. The, the game has changed a lot, yeah. and they encourage you to play the ball more and go through and play the shot. Yeah, the, the line of refereeing is really changed and improved over the last few years. In fact, uh, Lee Drew, who's the English coach, is... Uh, in charge of the PSA tour and the referees, and um, they've, they're really trying to make players play the ball more. You know, one of our goals is to get squash in the Olympics, obviously, and the stop-start and the constant lets have not helped us in the past. So, 
the, the refereeing line is to try and get kick people to play the ball, not look for easy strokes, and to, and to make it a free-flowing game, which, when it's played at its best, is fantastic to watch. Right. See the England bench there? They are uh, look overly happy with that decision, but they're, uh, they're looking composed and just really hoping their man can, can draw them level in this one. I think if England pulls this off, it'll be amazing. Uh, when was the last time England won, you said? I th I'm not sure the last time they won, but I think it was 2000, the last time they were in the final. And they, they won in, I think, 98. So, yeah, it's been 20 years or so. So, Wow. It's been, coming from an Englishman, it's been too long. So, uh, <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's been fantastic Egyptian, Pakistani teams in that time. And... Um, and it's not not easy. Ooh. Give him a let there. It's a good start here though from Nick. He made an error on the first point, but since then he's played some really good squash here, and he's been he's being tough. He's being consistent. Marwan though is pretty unflappable. He's uh, you know he's already a world junior champion at 17. He got to the final here. He plays on the PSA tour. He's he's already a very for his age. He's incredibly experienced player great squash from Nick he's got him all over the place here oh. 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 I think there um, from Nick he played a fantastic rally but he went for the cross court Nick when he really didn't need to he just in this shot here he just yep. put the straight drop in he'd, he'd have it a, a little bit of youth there and a um, little bit of naivety especially with 2-1 up and he's playing some great squash the straight drop and take the point and and uh, I think uh, it also shows a little bit of maturity yeah. out here because, as you said, Lamar once played a bunch of PSA tournaments and he seems to be playing pretty straightforward squash and not trying for too many nicks, which in turn end up opening the court a little bit. Yeah. That's a great shot from Nick. I think this is what Nick needs to do. Keep pushing him back to yeah. the corners and work him and hope. Yeah, there yeah, you go. That was perfect a perfect rally point. from Nick there. Great length. There's a young fan really enjoying it up in the the back seats there. A little bit of contact as they came through there, but Nick's just playing his shot. Good shot. Three two. Three two here. Some long rallies. Probably five six minutes into this game and only five points. Great to see a real, really good battle here. This is exactly what the uh, thousand plus crowd came to see. Uh, again, there, Nick opening it up a little bit too, too much. Didn't probably need that. Ooh. An unforced error. And now, three on. It's a fine line here between stamina and patience, and I think. If Nick can keep working the ball deep to the corners, I think he has a better shot. But easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, very much so. We're sitting outside. It's an easy game from out here, isn't it? I think Mar Marwan's been very smart. He's been patient. He's kind of trying to put the ball in good areas and then wait for Nick's errors. And Nick is really dominating a lot of the rallies, but it's just his error ratio is a little too high right now. But it's still a long, long way to go. Very bouncy. On the, normally, the the glass courts are quite dead. Um, this one, it's very warm. That's oh, a great that's shot. a great shot. Sending the wrong way there. Beauty. And that just shows my one. He's very up up and down the walls and consistent. But he also has that flair, that ability to do that, which which is very tough to play against. Beautiful shot there. So talk to me a little bit about the Indian team and the Indian squash players, the the, the junior team. They, uh, I know they had a they had a tough one against Pakistan um, here, um, but they uh, you know, they seem to have some good players, some good players coming through. Yes, they do actually. Um, the number one player, Yash Fateh, 
He is only 14 or 15 years old. And, uh, playing really good squash and comes from a town called Goa, which is close to Bombay. Right. And one of the interesting stories I heard was he doesn't have many players to play with there. Right. And he has to travel and take an 8 to 10 hour train ride all the way to Bombay. Oh, wow. And come here on the weekends and play with the lads up there and try and strengthen his game. Wow. And then on Sunday evening, he heads back to Goa, another 8 to 10 hour train, and goes back to study. So I think between Yash and the number two guy, uh, I think it's Mr. Bhatia, Rahul Bhatia, and uh, Veer Chotrani. The Indians are looking good for down the road. Right. Um, you know, training in the academies definitely helped them, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's also playing competitive matches in the junior circuit. Yeah. yeah great shot there from Marwan. Puts a nice nick in. He keeps that two point lead. Yeah, going back to. Um, to that I mean to get that sort of commitment to get those sort of, sort of train rides to come and train just that, that just bodes well in itself that, that, that he's that committed to his game and they're willing to put that much work in he's given a stroke there not sure about that one I think Mark, Nick's feeling the heat right now yeah he looks a little bit weary um, it's just an important time in the match he's it's now a three-point lead again. He needs to keep his head here. He came back in the first game. There's no reason why he can't hear. Yeah, he's oh, lost. that's a great shot. Great shot. Volley drop. A little, winner. A little look, look back at Nick there, trying to trying to yeah. suss him out. Nick's just got lost his quality a little bit here. He needs to get his head back, head back as quick as he can. Again there. Another loose shot. He's giving him a let there. Just enough for him to swing it. My one's not too happy about that. Hit the ball, please. Yes, let eight four. I think he wanted him to play the ball there, but I think Nick was in his swing. Yeah, it's a little tough from where we're sitting, but yeah, it's um, you can see why he felt hard done by there. Nick's just not lost his quality going in short. He's on top of him here. Oh, Ooh, he made, made an, an error. error. Just given it, given. Uh, this is something similar to what happened in the first game. Five, yeah. Eight. Three point difference again, and uh, we're gonna find out if Nick has it in him to. Yeah. Try and level the game. Yeah, he needs to refocus here. It's a big part of the match. Sometimes in squash, all it takes is one or two points to yeah. give a little bit of confidence. Yeah. And that yeah. nudge to the player to yeah. try and work three, harder. Three pass for you can a little bit of contact there, but you see again Nick threw in a boast from the back of the court. Came through there. Yeah, it's going to be a no let. He's cleared, cleared that well enough. Nick's got to stop put, putting that boast up there. He's uh, my one's too good at the front of the court. Oh. I've ten five game ball. There. Yeah, ten my one five. doing. Game very ball. professional job here he's a uh, tough start of the game but he's kept consistent and he's now got five five game balls great little nick there from nick and out six ten game ball And there he takes the game, 11-6, game and gives Egypt two games, two games to love lead in this first match of this three-match team series. Okay, so we're having a look at some highlights here from the uh, the second game. Marwan just 
took control towards the end there and um, now there's a two game lead you can see the Egyptian bench is definitely a lot more calm now than it was after the first game they were, uh, there's, they had there's five only, players around him and now it's only two so they do yeah I mean I think it goes to show though if you can get the game or put some pressure on there's an awful lot of pressure on them but it's definitely a lot calmer now and uh, I think he, think he feels fairly in control of this match yep I think Nick needs to again make up his mind whether he needs to go short or deep because he's putting a lot of pressure on himself by running around and he's feeling the heat in the end this Chennai heat is definitely going to get you down the games yeah it's warm in here but Nick has the ability for sure he's just got to get that balance of attack and defense right he's for me I would like to see more lift on the ball from the front corners especially um, when he's going in he's going in short and Marwan's able to use his speed I'd like to see more change of pace he's, there's a lot of hard hitting but there's not a lot of variety if he if he can lift the ball it's going to give him more time on the tee and he also needs to be a little bit a little more clinical on the volleys um, absolutely and and try try and try and finish it off a, li a little bit better especially at the front two corners but you know although he's too loved down he's he's played some good squash he's not he's not far away here it's uh, it's got to be mentally tough and stick stick with his game plan you can see the egyptian bench has recruited a lot of indian kids very smart very very savvy that you know the kids there look like they're having a good time and uh, Great to see so many kids that have been here through the last two weeks enjoying squash and getting involved and cheering. It's been it's been a fantastic spectacle for squash and all credit to Indian squash and Cyrus for putting on this tournament. And uh, you know I've been to the last few World Championships and I've not been to a venue as good as this uh, ever. It's it's really fantastic. So really really great for the game. Hopefully it inspires a few youngsters and uh, you know they can play for the Indian team down the road yeah I mean I'm sure it would it would inspires me and I'm I'm old and past it so uh, I'm sure <laughs> these guys will love it some crowd pictures again here oh. Nick again going for the Nick there where he's certainly living up to his name with that shot <laughs> that's a better shot that's a much better there shot there you go I'm not sure he squeezed him tight there. Oh, I'm not sure about that one. It's oh, a good rally here. That's a good shot. Oh, what a shot. Fantastic rally there. Crowd really loving that one. Big roar for Marwan. That was a huge point. See Nick on his heels there. Nothing he could do about that one. It's interesting, you know, a lot of the game has changed in recent years with sports science that the kids focus a lot on strength training and as you can see they do a lot of work on their legs, upper body and mm. core. Yeah. Yeah, the physiques and the training has changed a lot in, in recent years and uh, very much more a powerful explosive game now with the technology as well. It's scary, a lot of these kids are 16 years old but they're bigger than both of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, they're very strong strong players. You can see the, see the strength in the legs of these guys. Pr pretty pretty amazing. Nick's not going to go down without a fight here. He's he's, he's he's a tough boy and he's he's trained very very hard for this. So don't don't expect him to give it up easily. But it's very difficult when you're two left down to a world champion. Ooh. Marwan's getting very upset with the calls by the referee out here. Yeah. And it's I think, I think cool. actually you see his bench there saying to him to play the ball here. I think he had a line through and Nick was fairly stuck. So, yeah, I'm surprised they gave that as a let. That's very similar as the one in the first game. Yep. So, our referee. Never an easy job. Uh, Nick's, ah. see, Nick tried to lift the ball there but nowhere near the height or the width that he needed and easy pickings there for Marwan he's got, he's got to improve his defensive game Nick it's not been not been strong enough here any time you open the court that much you're in trouble yeah that's a great, that's a great shot. shot yeah he's very quick though Marwan that's great great pickups There we go. It's a bit of a change of pace there from Nick. I think that's what he needs, and he got the 
Easy reply from it. Yeah, they're both boast is not going to work for Nick though. Stroke to Egypt. Stroke to Egypt. I feel like the boast is it's a slow boast, two wall boast, and he's just so quick, one one. He puts Nick under so much pressure with that. Yeah, I think Nick is just trying something different, you know, yeah. and really trying to put him off guard. But it's it's yeah. hurt him a few times. Yeah. with the bow shot. It's a great boast from oh, Talking yeah. about the boast, Marwan just gets yeah. him with it. Very fair from Nick there, calling his double bounce. You see there, Simba Mahate in the, in, the, in the crowd there, the legend that is. So you see Nick really pu puffing now. Marwan's gone up a gear here. He's, he, can, he can smell blood and he's, re he's ready for the finish line. That's a big lead. Five love it is. in the third game. It's a lab labored movement there from Nick, and, uh, and Marwan's really, really pushing for the finishing line now. I do feel the first game was crucial here. I think Nick, Nick was right in there, and he had his opportunities, a couple of errors, and if he'd have won that, you could see how panicked the, the Egyptian team were after that game. If he'd have won that, things could have changed very quickly. Oh, what a shot. Uh, right now, Marwan is very confident playing some great squash. Oh, dear. Looks like Nick may have pulled something here as he... Oh yeah, I see that lunge and the slip. Oh. He saw he is also getting them and it's a combination of the floor being a little sweaty if they're, you know, running around. Yeah. So you've got to be very yeah. careful about the lunges and the dives. Yeah. Yeah, we actually saw in our quarterfinal with Canada, very unfortunate, it was a um, match ball to the Canadian boy and he did a similar lunge and tore his hamstring really badly and had to pull out of the match. Um, you never want to see that, and it's um, it's going to happen in squash. I mean, look at that. It's a, it's a very tough movement. You see Nick wiping down the sweat here. He doesn't want to slip again. He's trying to get trying to get his head together here and give it one final push. So Alex, being English descent, do you still have a lot of friends back home who uh, are coaching? And you know, any upcoming youngsters? Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. I go, I go back every year and take some players back from the states to train. And uh, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people I grew up playing with and uh, you know playing against um, are out in the states now. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, or, or abroad coaching. There's a lot of them have gone, gone away. But there's still a good amount at home and. Uh, yeah, you know, England will always produce players. They're probably not quite the volumes of of, of the past, but from what um, the coaches tell me, it's, there's some really good players coming up. And uh, you no, know, the, the one thing England has and always will have is it has a fantastic league structure where when you're 15, 16, and onwards, you get to play as adults and you play weekly. And you know, there's a lot of good adults that have played for the years there, and it's it's a great school of of toughening up players, and it's something I would love to get in America it's something that we miss out our players are very good but they're just missing that final final bit and um, and I know they have the same in Egypt so you're always going to get some really good English players great rally from Nick great Wall, rally. much better point worked him all around the courts he's shown real signs here Nick he definitely has the ability is just getting the balance right between defense and attack and and being a little more consistent and he, he's he's right there with the best players Coming back to what you were saying about junior leagues and leagues in general, you know, it's it's interesting. Egypt has a very, very strong program for junior leagues. And uh, I was just training this summer with uh, the women's world number one, and she was telling me about how there are so many juniors in the pipeline who play with other clubs. And, you know, they're, they're producing some really good players. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a numbers game, and... There's, I think there's a couple of hundred Egyptian juniors. Oh wow, another fantastic shot. Nick's, Nick's really sort of show off his skill level now. He's definitely has that ability. Um, yeah, the Egyptians. There's so many of them playing, and and it's so competitive to to get on the teams, get in the clubs, and uh, you know that environment is just bringing out player after player. They also have heroes. They have a lot of heroes now to look up to. Wow, so. he's come back four points here. 
Yeah, it's after being down, love six. I feel like his quality has just got a little bit better, and he's maybe he's just relaxed a little bit, and uh, maybe Marwan relaxed in a bad way a little bit, and uh, you know, who knows? It's back on. That's a bit of a slower movement there to that boast. Good lift again from Nick. There'll be another sweat stoppage here. You can see that both boys are getting a little tired here. There's a few more lets, a few more stoppages. It's to be expected after sort of, was it 30, 40 minutes of squash in these hot conditions. Uh, both need a breather out here, taking their time. I'm sure referee's going to ask them to play on. That's a great shot from Nick. His quality of hitting has just gone up here. He's um, he's hitting some great shots and he, and he's being a lot more clinical than he was. It's amazing. I don't know who to give more credit to, Nick or Marwan, because it seems Marwan seems to have a lead every game, and Nick has clawed his way back. Yeah. Just not able to close the big points, you know. Yeah. Oh, fantastic rally. Uh -oh. oh, that was a big point. Nick had Marwan everywhere then, but his relentless retrieving and his hunger to get that ball back just won him that point. You can see the English national coach telling Nick to push out here. He's very close. He is very close to doing some real damage, but Mar Marwan knows when to push, and he's and he's winning the vital points. Beautiful length there. Perfect length there for Marwan. Give him a 8-5 lead in this third game. Oh. oh, that's a great shot. Beautiful squash. Oh, that's a no That's alert. a great shot. Fantastic squash there. <laughs> There's McTard laughing away. He knows that wasn't a let. Perfect rally from Nick. Stroke to Egypt. Stroke there to... Uh, to Egypt. Nine, six. Some pretty aggressive uh, fist pump aimed in Nick's direction there. Great play from Nick. His, his quality has improved so much here. You do feel if he could get a game, then then the panic stations would be on from the Egyptian You're team. You're absolutely right. Uh, seven nine. I really think Nick needs to capitalise here and make one last push and see what he's got and see how Marvin reacts to it. See him, see him there breathing heavily. Egyptian bench talking to him. He needs to uh, got to keep calm here. Oh wow. Oh wow. Fantastic Very gutsy shot. shot there. It was a gutsy shot. So match balls here for the first match for Egypt. Nick taking his time, wiping his goggles. It's been a good match this. I think the crowd Definitely crowd want to see more. Match oh, to uh, match to little. Egypt there. A little bit of uh, physical stuff at the end, but 
that shouldn't uh, great great win there for for Marwan played well three games you can see how fired up he is and uh, it's given Egypt a real good advantage in this in this uh, best of three match 12 10 11 6 11 7 that was a great win for Marwan So it will be a few minutes now until the next match. We've got the number three strings up. Um, we have El Torki from uh, Egypt and we have young Sam Todd, the 15-year-old uh, English player. Should be a great match. Okay, just yes, we have witnessed the final, uh, first final of the uh, final event happening in Chennai for team event. So this is uh, three game is over. Uh, Tarek has won against Wall uh, from England. So it was uh, complete domination from the Egyptian player. Uh, so I just wanted to inform about the scores. Uh, you would have seen the first game is 12-10 and second is 11-6 and 11-7 in the third. So won very convincingly uh, in the first final. So in this game, if you can explain, uh, the players uh, from both the teams were uh, uh, placing the ball as well as uh, doing the uh, service and smash also. Just we wanted to talk to the winner. I uh, just wanted to hello and congratulations for the uh, winning the first final. So how do you feel? Uh, I feel so happy, of course. I'm playing for Egypt and uh, to win for Egypt is something uh, like uh, one of my dreams and to win today and be the world uh, champions something uh, beyond words so I'm so happy of course and uh, I hope uh, we win uh, the whole match so you won the first uh, set uh, with the difference of two like 12 10 and then remaining two sets won convincingly so what about that first set what is the uh, toughness that you felt in the first uh, game it was uh, so tense, of course. We both wanted to win. We both uh, want to win for our country. So uh, we both uh, gave it all, uh, held our nerves. Uh, and I'm so happy that I, uh, I, uh, I was the one who uh, proceeded and won the first. And that helped me win the second and the third. So what was the tactic and the strategy you have used uh, in the first set and the followed by that second and third game? Uh, I, uh, I didn't make any errors. I listened to my coach's uh, tactics. Uh, I moved him well across the court. And that helped me a lot. He was so tired and uh, well, I was still now. good sure in shape. So I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So I've uh, observed uh, both the players are doing the placement as well as uh, smashing the ball wherever it is required. So how do you plan like uh, in which uh, time that you place the ball and uh, you will smash the ball? Um, honestly, uh, I always think before playing every shot, I have like two seconds to uh, to put the shot to wherever I want. So uh, I just uh, I just uh, try to uh, play my shots uh, away from him and always uh, leave a space between him and the ball. And I think I uh, I succeeded in doing so. So all the best uh, for the rest of the tournament and uh, thanks for your time. So just now we have uh, taken the uh, interview with the player uh, who won the first game. So we will catch you soon in the next uh, game. Okay, so they've just seen some uh, highlights here of the end of the match there and you see a very happy Egyptian camp there. A little bit of uh, afters there, but just happy to get the win at the Egypt team and um, put them in a commanding position here. I'm joined now by uh, Simba Mohate, who's the US national coach, originally from Zimbabwe. He's, uh, he's going to commentate with me on these next two matches. And Simba, I think we're in, in for a treat here. We've got um, 
Sam Todd, who's only 15 years old from England, up against uh, Omar El Torki, who's uh, finishing the semi finals of the main event. And you'd think this would be one way traffic to Omar, but. Um, but Sam is a prodigious talent. He's only 15 years old and yeah. he's got nothing to lose. And yeah. I think we're all excited to watch this one. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the welcome, Alex. Uh, first foray into the avenue of commentating. So just wanted to uh, to say hello to all the viewers out there. Hope you're going to enjoy this match here. Sam Todd, for many, is uh, one of the rising stars in squash. He's, uh, I think, uh, 15 or 16, 15 probably and is a very skillful player, uses a lot of variation in his game um, and is from the hallowed club of Pontefract out in England so it will be a good uh, good contest here between him and uh, Al Torki looking forward to it Yeah it should be a cracker and uh, obviously England need this one to stay in the tie and stay in World Championships and give their number two a, a chance of, of winning the tie and uh, Egypt will be hoping that this, this one could be the one that takes them to their to another world title yeah it's just uh, we're getting some pictures here of the crowd and just uh, taking a look at this amazing setting here in the mall uh, the two referees I think they've changed it up here a little bit so it'll be interesting to see what happens next um, I think that an interesting thing to note for the Egyptian players is that once it gets a little bit close 8 all, 9 all. If Sam can give it a bit closer in game scores, then uh, he has a bit of a chance. They tend to take some chances, and if he doesn't uh, hold steady on those big points, um, then they get a bit of a gap and can win. But if he can stay steady on the big points, he's got a good chance of winning this match. Yeah, I think. It, I think if you look at the crowd here, it's it's quite incredible, Sim. Uh, the amount of people that are watching this and. Uh, um, are involved here and getting into the squash it's a great spectacle for squash and Indian squash have done an incredible job yeah all hats off to Cyrus Poncho who's been the main organizer here today he's had to do with all sorts of uh, of things on and off court and I think he's done an incredible job uh, organizing this uh, monstrous event um, as the players get ready here you get the last few words you've got Lee Drew speaking to Sam Todd giving him his last pieces of information. Uh, Omar's decided to stay on the court and get ready to play. Yeah, Sam's last minute preparations here. He'll come on the court. You'll see uh, you see both of these players play with a lot of creativity. Um, both like to hold the ball. Should be a gr very high skill level on there and a pretty exciting match. See our referees here. They uh, did a good job in the first one trying to get the players to play the ball and... Uh, I'm sure they'll be following that up here. Yeah, I think these are two very fair boys, and uh, we look forward to a very even contest with no interferences. Omar al Turki from Egypt to receive best of five games. Lamo. I haven't seen a huge amount of Omar. Omar plays. Um, obviously, got to the semi-finals, and uh, I think he beat uh, Nick Wall, the English number one, three love. So he's obviously a fantastic player, and um, he'll be it's very heavily fancied here. But um, interesting to see what what Sam Todd has got because he, uh, he we, he's not really been tested in the team event so far, and uh, yep. I think he, I think he's got a lot, lot, lot in there. He sure does. He has a lot of experience, and I think the biggest thing for him here is to like give himself some time to to get re used to the court and used to the atmosphere and the occasion. And I think his skills could shine through here. So, what's your call here, Alex? What's your prediction? Uh, you, I don't think you can look past. I mean, being an Englishman, uh, I'd obviously like to see Sam get a win here, but um, it's very hard to look past the Egyptian team and Omar is. Uh, is very uh, very um, very experienced player and uh, yeah. very classy player so I, I, I fancy Sam to get a game though I think Sam can get stuck in and um, I think I, I'd like to see the crowd really get into this one and I, I, I would go with Omar 3-1 what about you Simba? Yeah I mean I'm with you there I think I like uh, Sam's got some real strengths on the court front left in particular seems to be his strength uh, very seasoned for a very young boy um, and uh, I think um, my prediction will be probably the same as you I think I'm going to lie on the fence here 3-1 to Al Torki 
So you're just going to follow me? Yes, I am. <laughs> so I think these first couple of rallies, for those of you that are new to the game, you kind of want to see your opponent behind you as much as possible. Uh, and you'll see these exchanges back and forth, trying to get a position on the main part of the court, which is the T area where Omar is now and Sam is now. But if you can maintain that position, you've got a good chance of doing well in this sport. Yeah, Sam, a little bit of an experience there. A couple of couple of cheap errors, maybe a little bit of nerves. He looks yeah. pretty unflappable, though, Sam. To be honest, he doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be that, too much that bothers him. He seems pretty relaxed. I mean, he's 15 years old. I'm not sure he really knows. Yeah, I think a big part of it is feeling the feeling the f feeling the pace and just getting used to like what's on what's at stake here. But he's got a couple more chances in a team event. Surely in the next couple of years he'll be a mainstay on the England team well, Sam is from the same home as uh, James Wallstrop and uh, Lee Beach or two two world number ones from the same club which is uh, see very very rare and uh, they have a yeah. coach there called Malcolm Wallstrop who uh, who actually does a lot with the Indian players and um, I know they use that as a base there and yeah. Malcolm's one of probably the best coaches there's ever been and he's guiding Sam I think Malcolm won't like me for saying this but I think he's maybe in his 80s now early 80s and uh, still going and still producing champions and yep. great players yep. you see there all of Malcolm's players all the Pontefract players play with a very high skill level very very good with the racket and you can see there with Sam this, this shot here a little bit of hold and cuts that drop into the front corner incredibly difficult shot to play and yeah. great to watch yep yeah, it's amazing when you think about how young he is and uh, just the amount of skill he's already developed in such a short time on in the game. Um, I think, though, here he's going to have to be aware of how explosive Omar is. Um, he's a pretty explosive athlete. It's a great shot there by Sam following up a good drop shot. But uh, he just has to be aware of how quick Omar is. And once those nerves settle, he's going to be dealing with a very explosive athlete. Yeah. There's an, awful, there's an awful lot of pressure on Omar though here, isn't there? It's uh, everyone's expecting him to win. He's playing a very skillful, skillful young player. So it's not it's not an easy position for I think Omar's probably 17 or 18 to yeah. play in. It's a great shot there. Yeah. So you see, I think this would be probably the one area in Sam's game that, as he gets older, he's going to have to address. Just at times, look a, looks a little sluggish off the tee, not quite as quick as. Um, maybe Omar is, but he makes up for it and his amazing ability to, to use his racket and um, just something that as he gets older and stronger, I'm sure they'll be able to take care of and help improve. Good start here from both players. Four or some long rallies. Testing each other out a little. Yeah. You can see that uh, Torquay is probably stronger physically, but Sam is, as Simba said, he's more than hold his own with a racket so should be an interesting battle so Omar taking some space in the middle of the court trying to put pressure in the back corners great change of pace oh, that's a fantastic from Sam. shot that's a really clever shot there it's a complete change of pace ball stuck to the side wall yep not bad that Simba eh? yeah it's really really smart and well executed there by Sam Right back into the thick of it here, another ferocious rally. Jockeying for position once again. Omar trying to take the front of the court, little hold there, sends it to the back. Another hold. Impressed here with Sam's movement though, he's, uh, he's looking a lot sharper than I've seen him before. He's getting some good balls back. Here we are, 5 all, deadlock, first game. I do feel if, uh, similarly to the first match, if Sam's going to win the match, he probably needs to win the first game just to just to put some nerves into the Egyptian player and give him a little bit more confidence. Yep. So just uh, Sam, uh, Sam asking for a let there. A little interference trying to get through to the back wall there. Gets a let from the referee. Five all. Good to see both players playing through contact and when there is a let, just getting on with the decision. Yeah. Uh, they both seem to be very fair players and uh, 
that's what we want to try and see. And yeah, I think uh, World Squash is trying to actively, and PSA as well, trying to make a big statement uh, when it comes to interference and what people call blocking and trying to impede their opponent from getting to the ball. These referees have done a good job with this event, being very strict about that type of movement. And you can tell in the team finals here, after two weeks of squash, that the kids are getting used to it. So it's good to see. Just a couple of boast errors here from Sam. He needs to be careful, uh, trying to force it a little too much. He's, he's doing just fine. He needs to be patient and attack when the opportunity comes. That's for sure. This is a marathon, not a sprint, but a long way to go here. Great change of pace once again from a defensive position by Sam. Very dangerous from the back of the court there, Sam, with his long drop. Reminds me of a, a certain Mr. Will's drop. Oh, great shot. Nice little hold. Slight little fist pump from uh, Sam Todd there to his group. A little hold and cross. Followed up by a little hold. And uh, maybe that's the wrong clip. Yeah. Oh, there's an opening there. Be disappointed with that one. So as we come to the business end of this first game, 7-6, it's pretty tight here, Timber, isn't it? Yeah, pretty good first game, pretty even. I think very nervy. I haven't seen a lot of uh, long, arduous rallies, just very quick, short rallies, punctuated by a lot of errors. Uh, that's usually a sign of nerves. I think as the match wears on, we'll find that we'll have longer rallies with a lot more use of all four corners from both players. It's great length there. Some good defense there from Sam. He's in a lot of trouble. Got out of it. Oh, wow, beautiful. Wow. Great hold. Some good movement there for to get him out of trouble. And then when he got the opportunity, he put the ball away beautifully there. You see this little bit of hold stops... Omar on his tracks and then the quality shot to put it away. Yeah, for those of us that are new to the game again, the whole holding of the swing really impacts your opponent's movement, stops them on the tee and doesn't allow them to continue the momentum running forward. Very high skill level shot to, to, to execute, but at this level, it's a pretty big part of the game. Once again, just taking a, looking, uh, taking a look around the mall here, just can't get over the fact that we're in the middle of a mall in Chennai, middle of the day on a Sunday, well, towards the end of the day, actually. It's quite a fantastic setting. And Sam just takes an 8-7 lead here. I think it's the first time he's got the lead in the game. He'll be really hoping, the English Campbell will be really hoping he can take this first game and have that confidence going forward. It's a little nervous, Omar. Oh, well, great get. It's another hold there. Uh, Sam's on fire here. Oh, great it's length. a great rally. Very good length there. Crowd appreciates the precise shot there from Omar as he ties it up again. Eight all. This is a big point for coming up. Huge couple of points coming here. Oh, he's oh, gone for the... Uh, he's gone for the leisure center boast there. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, nervy tin there from Omar. He seems to be feeling the nerves for sure. Yeah, I don't think I've seen many short balls from him, and when he have, he's looked a little bit heavy with them, so... Yeah. That's a, that's a big error and huge opportunity for Sam now. That's I like it when Sam slows, uh, slows the ball down there. I think it gives him a little more time on the tee. He doesn't want to get into a hard-hitting battle here with, with Omar. Yep. Completely understand that. But you can see Omar is just unsettled here. Just taking a little bit too long on the ball. 
Um, I'd love to see him look to volley a little bit more. It's just a simple let there. I'm not too sure. Do you think that could have been a stroke there, Alex? It's hard to tell from this angle, but it de definitely could have been. I think that they're, they're encouraging players to play the ball. And, you know, again, there was no complaints from Sam. I think he's, uh, he's happy with the let, so probably the right decision. There we are again, big That's point. That's a good shot. Great shot. There'll be a confidence builder for Omar. That was a loose ball, and he put it away nicely. See a couple of the players in the crowd. I see the U.S. boys. They're enjoying the action. Trying to hopefully get some tips. I would hope Simba from. Uh, yeah, well, they need to do better. Oh wow, that's a big decision. So Nine all stroke there, penalising Omar for not moving out of the way. Gives Sam game ball. Big point here, big point for Sam Todd. Another mm. nervy drop there. Yep. I just think that's where Omar's falling a little short. Once he attacks the back of the court, he's not really following it up with a volley to maintain pressure. He's preferring to wait and then hit the ball off the ground. It would be better served to volley. Good shot there. So we go into a tiebreaker here. have to win by two clear points. Now, 10 all, a player must win by two points. Nice little kill across the court there. Good use of the wrist. Oh, another error. A lot of nerves going in there from Omar. Takes another look at his camp. 11, 10. Trying to find some confidence from there. See Sam's dad, Mick Todd, there in the front row. Got to be nervous times for any parent. Oh, beautiful long drop there. Not sure if he got that, but seems he did. Thought that was great. Great, move, great movement. Good. Sam in control of this rally. Oh, a and then length. a beautiful squeeze great length. length. Screams of Yala from a very nervous looking Egyptian bench Let there. Here we go. 11 all, all tied up. Love to see England take this tie actually, just to make the whole thing a little bit more exciting and interesting. Uh, Sam getting frustrated there, but he hit a loose ball. He's got to do. He's got to do better with that. Well, 11, game ball. Yeah, it takes the space. It's the second and third movement there that gets annoying, but. Can't afford to hit the ball in the middle of the court. Oh. That's a rash tin from Sam. There's a little one bit of an experience there. One, one love lead to Omar El Toki. So what do you think about that, Alex? What would be your tactical advice if you were speaking to Sam right now? If you're Chris Ryder or, or Lee Drew in Sam's camp, what would you be saying I, here to the young I man? I think, first of all, he's doing a great job. He's, he's really controlled a lot of the game. He just needs to be a little bit more clinical, uh, especially in the front of the court. I think actually from the back of the court he's attacking very well, but I think he could attack a little bit better from the front. I also would like to see him use a bit more change of pace. He did it a couple of times and it worked really well. I think it'll just give him a bit more time on the tee from the back if he could lift the ball a little more yeah. and then and get on the front. But he's moving well, he's playing well. He's got him under a lot of pressure and uh, he's just got to win those those important points. Yeah, and uh, conversely, you've got the Egyptian camp who tend to go in fours or in packs between games, and a lot of information gets exchanged there. Very different styles uh, in terms of coaching between games. Uh, very passionate, a lot of information going into Omar. Usually, uh, just a lot of encouragement, I expect. Um, yeah, we talked about that, and it was actually in the first match after the first game, you could see six or seven the Egyptian camp going over and then just one of the English just different culture and it and it seems to work for different people it's, uh, yeah. the English camp will be a little frustrated I think I think the, the, the players are playing well and they're, they're close but they're just not quite taking their chances right now and uh, um, let's hope Sam can keep up the quality of performance uh, all credit to Omar though as well he was very solid there he was obviously nervous but he didn't he, he, he made Sam make those errors at the end and he yeah, he, sure he, did. he, he you know, he, again, he's a very experienced, very, very good player, and he's 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 showing why he's one of the best junior players in the world right now. Yep. 
So I think the big thing for the viewers to watch out there is to see if Sam can, as Alex said, use the change of pace and try and continue to frustrate Omar with that. And uh, if we can see Omar maybe get a bit more aggressive with his shot making, maybe step up the court and look to volley a lot more. So Australian camp there watching on. Simba just looking up here to the one, two, three, four rows in the mall. There's really not a spare place to stand. It's uh, and the crowd is packed. There's hardly a spare place here. It's just fantastic to see. Yeah, such great crowd at watching this watching this tournament. Yeah, and I kind of like how much natural light we're in a bit of an open area here with a big Stroke sunroof and there's a lot of natural light coming down. Obviously, the players have to contend with the actual lights themselves on the court, but it just makes for a much more inviting atmosphere. A bit too short, too quickly here in this first part of the game and hopefully Sam can settle down. Just going way too short, way Whoa. too quick. They're squashing now. I do feel this match could maybe have got could, could go yeah. another way, but yeah. uh, if if the English players had won that first first games, yep, so oh, true of the Egyptians. I think very 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 much a confidence level team. If their confidence is high, it allows them to free up their skills and their moving, and this just makes them way more dangerous than when they're up against it in terms of the score. Yeah, it's another great volley there from Omar. Yeah. I think I called it here, Alex. I, I think I talked about Omar looking to volley a little more and be aggressive around the Five, middle. And two. sure enough, I think we've uh, seen an, uh, seen evidence of that in the, the first couple of rallies. No, you're 100% right. He's just starting to relax. Sam's just losing his length a little as well. Let's see if we can get a response. It's another simple chin there from Omar. And out. Three, five. Kind of decelerates here on the volley drop. You need to just push through that racket. A couple of interesting questions for the viewers to give to Alex here. I just wanted to, if you want to get to know Mr. State a little bit about where he grew up and, and out. Six, how he three. got into this game and why he's rooting for the men in red today. <laughs> mm. Impartial Simba, I'm impartial. Oh, okay, you're Switzerland today. That's awesome. <laughs> I think we'd all like to see a really great final, close, close match. Throw to England, Mr. Todd. Mr. Wow. Todd. It's an interesting decision. Mind the excessive there. contact. There's no need for that. I can make the decision uh, without it. Mr. Ramachandran. Ramachandran. Yeah. And out. He's a big uh, benefactor of this event and has made a lot of things possible for us whilst we've been here. Yeah, squash has a lot to say thankful for, especially in India, to, to Mr. Ramachandran. And, uh, it's fantastic to see see the academy and what what he's what he's produced there. Yep, that's for sure. I think uh, on the bigger now spectrum, it'd be nice four. to see what this what this particular event does for world squash in general as we look to get ourselves into the Olympics. Good follow-up volley there from Sam. Trying to take the middle away from Omar. Just lost his quality of length slightly. Yeah, you can see the ball's not really entering the corners, as it were. Got to get that ball into the spots. Starting to really make a couple of mistakes. Maybe fatigue is creeping in. Eight, four. That is going to be a stroke. stroke. Sam not clearing. That's Nine. an example of what Four. the referees are trying to get away from. He's got to make a bigger effort to get out of the way in that situation. So a five-point lead here. It's looking pretty decisive at this time. Sam's definitely slowed down a little and just... Just making a lot of unforced errors right now. I think yeah. he needs to re regroup a little bit here and come back. He can put, he can, as he showed in the first game, he can play better than this. Yeah, certainly can. 
it's once again just important to remember he is 15 so his yeah. physical capabilities are nowhere near their optimum level yet he will in, he will get better as he gets older physically and that's going to be a scary prospect for future world championships to come That ball is in and, and Sam concedes 11 the point. 11-4 to, to Egypt. They go two love Egypt up in game. Mm -hmm. You can see Chris Ryder there, the England coach, trying to trying to speak to Sam. Sam looks a little bit fatigued there, trying to trying to get him going. Trying to give him a second win there. So this is where this is where the coaches become important and, and try and change your frame of mind. And you know he's a young boy. This this experience will be fantastic for him. He has so much ability and he has the ability to come back here and as well. But it's but it's not going to be easy coming from too little down against a player of the uh, El Torquey's class. Yep. Just I think uh, sometimes we. We, we harp on the negatives, and I think I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the positives here, but the behavior in this particular match has been outstanding. Both players looking to play the ball and be, um, and be courteous and call their double bounces when they've happened, and I think that's a big part of the sport that uh, we need to continue to encourage and make the referees' lives a little easier when the players are being fair. Just getting a good view here from the cameras of... Uh different shops and the different people walking past watching watching this so we see the English camp here trying to get Sam going you can see in his face he's tired but he's certainly not going to give up he's going to give it one last push and uh, Egypt now one game away from winning the world championships and uh, it's going to be a, a massive win for them there's Sam Sam Todd making his way to the court here for the third game Egypt leads two loving games, and uh, let's see what he can do in this third game. Simba, you've been in India now for a couple of weeks. Tell us, uh, tell us some of your highlights, the things you uh, have well, enjoyed uh, about this great country. Yeah, I just you got to love the hospitality, the way people are always uh, ready to help you. you. You are struck by how many people there are in the country and how many people are at the mall right now even on a Sunday afternoon and so you forget that there's uh, close to a billion or a little bit over a billion people here so that, that part gets you but other than that I mean it's been a fantastic trip the US team has been great on and off court um, and we've enjoyed a lot of good curry and and naan bread and uh, all sorts of dosas and so it's been great in that aspect do you think you've um, you've done your bit for Indian food this this do you, do you think you've done your quota or maybe a little bit over over the last few weeks I think I've gone way over what anyone could possibly expect to eat in two <laughs> weeks but uh, I'll be straight back onto the juice program when All I right. get home right. and uh, hopefully get my body back in check here and just put on a couple of pounds around the waist region which need to be evaporated <laughs> ASAP it has been some of the best food we've uh, Ever experienced over here, that's for sure. Um, it's a oh, great wow. drop from Sam Todd here. Good start, three-one start. Lee Drew's very happy three, with that drop shot. Says that's probably the happiest I've ever seen Lee Drew look. Actually, yeah. it's nice to see a smile on his face. Yeah, yeah. He's normally only that happy when he's in the gym. Yeah, I must say, I had a comment from one of the boys on the U.S. team. They were remarking about how flawless his hair is. It's not one of the things I've noticed about Lee, but. Now that you pointed out, maybe he does spend a little bit more time on that curly flop up, two, three. up on his head. I'm not sure it's real, to be honest with you, but maybe I'm just a little jealous. I'm not sure. Yeah. If any of the viewers could see the commentary team right now, uh, we are devoid of hair. Uh, that's the one area we do lack. But we do love the sport, and we're excited to get the opportunity to do this this afternoon. You see Sam's a little bit more focused now. He lost a little bit in the second, but he's he's back here. He wants to wants to show everybody what he can do. Yeah, he's going to have to dig into those reserves. Try and claw his way back into this match. That's a good shot. Yes, left. Yes, left. Some interesting call there from the referee. Two, three. We've got an Indian coach and a 
I think that's Abe Singh, one of the Indian players there. Good to see him taking in the action. Go through a cross section of players there, a couple of Czech players, Zimbabwean players. The game of squash is truly global and uh, reaches all corners of the planet. So it's nice to see all those countries represented. Oh, it's That's a great, great quality there. shot there. Also great to see Omar play the ball then. He didn't look for the stroke. He went to play the ball and he got rewarded from a beautiful tight length. Yeah. Up. Oh, he, he is absolutely it. rolling now. 4-3. This is where the Egyptian can become very dangerous. Yeah, a lot of the Egyptian players have the ability to win quick points and get on a roll. Once again, they're taking good movement. Space. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. It's very fair and play from Sam there, calling his ball down. It's very great, acknowledged Five. by the Egyptian camp. Three. He's nearing the finish line here. He's looking very, very good. He's, uh, he's El Torquay. Yeah, just uh, another one of those really explosive Egyptian players. Reminds you a little bit of the Faraz Dusukis and that type of player. Just short, stocky, really, really powerful movements. Very powerful legs. Yeah. That's good that he played that, that again. Ball. Well done there. He's, he's trying to eat into Sam physically here, trying to really work him over and make sure he can create a bigger gap for himself. I think this is where you can see that Sam is 15 and playing a 17, 18-year-old. The, the physical training that... Wow. Oh, that's a great shot. Physical training that Omar's been able to do that Sam's not quite ready to do yet is, is huge. Been way better than a lot of the players this weekend and be nice to see them celebrate in the same vein. Seven, four. Beautiful Great post there. Two ball, two ball, Sam not able to go and get that. Seems like his legs are falling away a little bit. Omar's really relaxed here, isn't he? He started to show his range. Yeah. Think for the public, uh, usually when you think about Egyptians, you talk about a lot of short shots going in. Omar here has played some immaculate length to really expose Sam's movement by making him have to cover the, a big part of the court like that. Yeah. Round Q there, Simba. There you go. 8 4. So the court is tough to cover when you have to go all the way into those back corners and then all the way into the front. That's when the game of squash becomes ex exceptionally difficult. It's a great lob there. A yeah, beautiful shot. Follows it up with another hold. Sam is under it here. He's floating around the court now, Omar, isn't he? Yeah. Really putting some work into Sam's legs here. Down. And there's the error. Looks like the writing Nine. is on the wall a little Four. bit here, Simba. Um, what can you say about this e Egyptian team? You have to hand it to them. They are, uh, they're just a class above right now, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, as much as we'd like to, to get it to be a little bit more like parody in the game of squash right now, I mean, Egypt is way way ahead um this is a very and dominant performance championship ball and here we are championship balls egypt to become world junior champions retain their title and, and there, there we are is. 11 four. And there it is master Fantastic egypt performance Three games to love. Very jubilant. Ladies and gentlemen, the new team the Egyptian team. Fully deserved win. Congratulations to Egypt. Yeah. As the players storm on, celebrate. <laughs> Deserve to be very happy. They're world junior team champions for another year. You see the result there. 13-11, 11-4, 11-4. That first game was tough. Todd had game balls, but there we are, the Egyptian team looking happy and relieved, and, and so they should, Simba, they were, they were a class above.
Well, I think uh, we've had an exceptional show of squash here from this team. Very talented, very, very skilled team. And uh, congratulations to Egypt on becoming world team champions for another for another two years. Um, this is Simba Mwari signing off. And I uh, hope everyone has a great rest of their Sunday, wherever you are. Thank you to Chennai for a great time. Good night. And it's Alex, Alex Day here just signing off, just showing some of the highlights here and the, the team trying to lift up their coaches. That's going to take some Simba. effort to lift uh, lift them up. It's a uh, fantastic effort from Egypt and they're going to take some beating in two years' time, which um, we don't know where the tournament will be yet, but um, they're, they're certainly going to have a great team again. And uh, here we see them celebrating. They didn't even have to play yeah. their number two, who was the world junior champion, Mustafa Hassel today. So it goes to show you that their strength yeah I mean uh, I think um, I think I've just been told by the referee to that and uh, our producer here to keep going there here they are throwing their coach Mr. Matani up and down he's won a fair amount of team championships and uh, this is interesting that uh, the boys won't throw out their back here throwing him up and down <laughs> <laughs> well Matani is looking good these days he's lost some weight he's uh, they were yeah, able to pick him up so yeah he's back on the fitness regime but uh, as the producers uh, wrap up here and we try and start sending up, uh, setting up for the prize giving ceremony, uh, we've been asked to continue talking about uh, a couple of things that have been going on. And um, I think the biggest thing is that you just remember how much pro producers have done. And we want to take this opportunity to thank Cyrus and um, all the organizers and everything they've done. Um, yeah, just now we have witnessed this. another game uh, here. Yeah, just now we have uh, witnessed the another game won by uh, Egypt. It's a uh, Egyptian dominance, totally we can say. So they now they are celebrating with their players and the coach. Uh, so it's been out and out uh, uh, Egyptian show that we can say in this uh, final event of the uh, team championship. So we can talk to the winner. Uh, so just a moment, they are uh, celebrating. So if you see this game, uh, the second game, it was totally out and out uh, uh, the placing as well as the uh, servicing part from the player which has been very outstanding I just want to talk to the player hello yeah I just want to talk to you so how do you guys enjoy enjoy how do you guys enjoy this <laughs> yeah they have been celebrating a lot how do you enjoy this uh, moment uh, so happy, yeah. say say uh, say publicato egipto uh, alto Say, say. So, uh, so back to your home, Egypt. What do you want to say to your country people? Uh, I say to him that uh, we achieved it uh, finally, and uh, Omar Turk is the, uh, is the, the best. best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best. And uh, Lamori, sorry. I just want to ask you, like uh, for individual as well as team, uh, Egypt is dominating anything. So, what was the secret behind the players from Egypt? Secret of Egyptian players? I don't. Uh, we're so good, man. We're so good. <laughs> Well, I train a lot, like we train uh, better than everyone, so we are the best. So your coach was uh, helpful for the uh, championship in this tournament, right? So what is your coach take on this? Uh, our coach is uh, the best in the world, like Captain Ahmed. Uh, uh, coached like uh, five, uh, five or uh, six uh, teams. He took the titles uh, five or six times. So he's the best coach ever. Uh, he uh, make us uh, very happy, very proud of, uh, of us. He make the old Egyptian culture uh, uh, proud of the the squash uh, players of Egypt. Okay. Thanks for your time. Ah, thank you. Thank you. So they have been enjoying a lot. So uh, in this tournament we witnessed Egypt has won this team event also. And like uh, say England also fought very well. The players from England. They also tried a lot in the first set. Uh, they were dominating in the first set, but they lost in the first set also. So over overall, in this tournament, if you say from July uh, 17th until now, it's been a combination of power pack performance in individual uh, category as well as team category. When you say individual, there also these players dominated a lot and teams even also do dominated a lot. In a short while, uh, you will have the prize distribution ceremony where the uh, presentation will happen and the chief guest will come. So. Hope you see you soon uh, in a short time. Thank you. How did you feel? What's going on? Uh, I had a great time this week. This was one of my first times playing team squash, and it was great to have my teammates and my coaches behind me when I got on the court and to cheer them on when they played.
All right, you had a good time here. Happy to hear that. audience to cheer before the presentation guys you've been having so much fun i'm very sure imagine fantastic event happening in chennai city a world class event third time so definitely it deserves a bigger cheer na makkal come on cheer panunga woo ladies and gentlemen we are all set to begin the wsl world juniors men's team presentations audience can you join in and cheer the champions please welcome the medal winning teams for the 2018 world junior championships our guests and our teams can i request you to please walk in audience you can cheer them as they walk in Our guests of honor who will be presenting our medals today are Our guests of honor who will be presenting our medals today are Pablo Serna World Squash Federation Vice President Mr Devendra Nath Sarangi IS retired Championship Chairman World Junior Squash Championship 2018 President the Squash Rackets Federation of India Mr Marcus Niles Technical Delegate Championships World Junior Squash Championship 2018 escorted by Mr N Ramachandran President Tamil Nadu Squash Rackets 
Association, patron the Squash Rackets Federation of India. Can we cheer for our guests of honor and our teams who are right now inside? All right. Our very first award is the Sponsorship Award, which will be given away to the number one Indian player. Can I please request Mr. Abey Mehta, partner Mehta Jewelry, to felicitate Yash Patte. Thank you so much, Mehta Jewelry, for being such a support, and of course, felicitating our top player with gold, crafted with lots of love and magic. Thank you for that. And now it's time to pass on the baton. Now that our fantastic event is about to be concluded, it's time to look forward to the next year and hand over the baton to our next year's host, Malaysia. For this, I invite Andrew Muthu to please step forward. And now I request Pablo Serna. World Squash Federation Vice President to take this forward. Okay, come here. Put in the I just. First of all, I want to thank India, Rami, Sarangi, and Cyrus for an amazing and outstanding tournament. It's one of the greatest tournaments, if not the greatest, I've ever been. So thank you very much. It has been outstanding in every single sense. Now it's the time to pass on the flag to next year host Malaysia, where I think our good friend Jing Hao, Nick, and everyone will be there who know how to treat us. So we look forward to having a great tournament as good as this one. And again, thank you very much for Squash Rocket Federation of India. Congratulations, Malaysia. Good luck. All right. It's time to award a bronze medalist and to give away the award and the medals. I request Marcus Niles, WSF Technical Delegate, to please step forward. Team USA, Dalem Mauji. Taiba Worth. Ayush Menon, Thomas Rossini, Official Simba Mowati, Alex Strait, Official, Congratulations USA. Mark us a quick picture. All right. And now for our next bronze medalist from Czech Republic, Vitus Victor. Warlick Onrik, Virgil Benjamin, Panchek Mare, and Motina Jan, the official. Congratulations, Czech Republic. Thank you, Marcus. All right.
Next up, our silver medalist and to give away the medals, I now request Mr. D. Sarangi, IS retired, President Squash Rackets Federation of India, to please step forward. From Team England, Nicholas Wall. Samuel Todd. James Wyatt. Jared Carter. Coach Chris Ryder. And of course, Lee Drew, the manager. Ladies and gentlemen, can we cheer for our silver medalists? Congratulations, Team England. And finally, to give away photos taken, yes. To give away the gold medal, I now request the WSO Vice President Pablo Serna to please step forward. Ladies and gentlemen, our gold medalist, the WSO Men World Junior Team Champions for 2018, Team Egypt! Thank you. All right. First up, Marwan Tarek. May I please request you to step forward? Mostafa Asal. Omar Turki. Mostafa Al Sarti. Ahmed Mohammed, the coach, the head coach, Nasser Hasna and the coach, all right, the WSF World Team Trophy will be presented by WSF Vice President Pablo Serna. Congratulations. And now the SRFI trophy will be presented by Piridevindranath Sarangi, IS retired champion, chairman, championship chairman, World Junior Squash Championship 2018, president of the Squash Rackets Federation of India. Congratulations. Now I'd like to hear a few words from the captain, Marwan Tarek. Shh. 
sure. Captain, we want to hear from you first. Marwan Tarek, a few words from you. So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers of the tournament for uh, making out such a great tournament like this. Um, the men's uh, teams, uh, all of the men's teams that played this tournament, of course, uh, Team England, Team USA, and Team Czech Republic. Uh, it was a great tournament. Uh, we did our best. Uh, thanks for all the sponsors of this uh, tournament, uh, everybody who volunteered in doing so. Um, and of course, uh, thank you for Team Egypt, my team, every single member, the players, uh, Omar, Mustafa, and uh, Mustafa Serti. Uh, and of course, of course, uh, our great uh, and godfather, Captain Ahmed Matani, who uh, formed such a great team that uh, didn't lose a single game in this uh, men's uh, team tournament. So, uh, could we please uh, hear a round of applause for uh, Captain Ahmed Matani? Uh, we can't also forget uh, our great uh, Captain Nasser Abdel Menahem, he's our mentor. Yeah, he puts a lot of effort with us. And our manager, of course, Mr. Yab Hafiz, he's a great person. Yeah, we, we, we were a very, uh, very strong team, very strong uh, group of people who, who believed uh, in uh, claiming the title after we lost it two years ago to Pakistan in the final. So we, uh, we're so happy to get it back and we're so happy to be here in Chennai. Uh, thank you all for coming here. Thank you all for cheering for us. Uh, I hope you could uh, support us uh, always. Thank you. Audience, can we cheer for all the champions who are inside, please? Come on. Congratulations. Thank you, guests of honor. And now, time for photographs.